Antarctica is one of the most beautiful and least visited places on Earth. With its stark beauty and endless adventures, it's one place you'll never forget. Few places on Earth are as remote and mysterious as Antarctica. This frozen continent is home to some of the most unique and stunning landscapes on the planet, and with an incredible array of wildlife, there are so many reasons to go. Despite its harsh conditions, Antarctica is surprisingly beautiful and one of this planet's most exciting places to visit. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of Mike on the Move. In this video, I will share my experience visiting the white continent of Antarctica on board Atlas Ocean Voyages' newest ship, the World Traveler. This is a nine-day itinerary from Ushuaia, Argentina on December 28, 2022. If you're planning to take a trip to Antarctica or just curious about the trip to the end of the world, this video is for you. Let's get this video started. If you are starting your trip from the United States of America, most likely you will need to do a layover or fly into Buenos Aires, Argentina to catch a direct flight to Ushuaia. Since Antarctica adventures occur during winter in the Northern Hemisphere, I recommend staying one night in Buenos Aires to ensure you make it to your embarkation time in Ushuaia. Now, if you've never visited Buenos Aires, I recommend you spend at least two nights checking out Argentina's cosmopolitan capital. It's an eclectic combination of Latin and European influences with tree-lined streets and post-colonial architecture. Atlas Ocean Voyages offered a direct charter plane using Edolinas Argentina from Buenos Aires International Airport on embarkation day for its cruise passengers. Making our way down to Ushuaia, the southernmost city on the planet, or El Fin de Mundo, the end of the world, I could hardly contain my excitement. The views on the plane were just unbelievable. After flying over the clouds, we can finally see the white capped mountains of Ushuaia. Ushuaia's airport is at the edge of the Beagle Channel, and the airport looks like you are landing at a ski lodge with bolted ceilings and a lot of exposed wood. Now, after getting our luggage, we exited the airport to get on a charter bus to the cruise terminal. Coming from Buenos Aires, where the temperature was 90 degrees, it felt pretty chilly in Ushuaia since it was about 50 degrees that day. The charter bus dropped us off at the cruise terminal and we had to take tenders to get onto the ship. The ship could not dock due to the Drake's Passage rough seas alert. Multiple ships this day were unable to depart due to the rough seas alert. So we went on to the tenders and quickly arrived on the new World Traveler ship. After getting on to the ship, all cruise passengers assembled in the Atlas Lounge, where the crew quickly sat us down, offered us glasses of champagne and hors d'oeuvres, and promptly got us all checked in. Our cabin was located on deck five, number 526. It was a B1 category room, which is 270 square foot with a balcony that was comfortable for the journey. My cabin had a seating area with a table and two chairs, a separate space with a vanity, a large closet and a mini fridge. My favorite feature of my cabin was the balcony, which I used more than expected. World Traveler is Atlas Ocean Voyage's newest ship, which took its first inaugural season in Antarctica in November of 2022. This ship is a beautiful, state-of-the-art, fuel-efficient hybrid ship featuring eight decks, six of which are for passengers. On deck four, you will find the fitness studio, which I used several times during my stay. This studio has two treadmills, a cycling bike, and space for stretching and weights. Also on deck four, you will find a sauna complete with panoramic views Embarkation day is always an exciting time, and with all this excitement, 
I had to get myself a strong adult beverage from their observation lounge, which is called here, the Dome. Uh, the captain made an announcement a moment ago saying that the Drake's passage is too rough, too rough for us to sail into. So unfortunately he made the announcement saying that we gotta stay here overnight, staying in Ushuaia overnight. Well folks, there you have it. We must recognize that traveling to Drake is dangerous and can delay your Antarctica adventure. For this itinerary, the winds were strong. Some even called it violently intense. This is why the Drake has earned its reputation as the Earth's roughest waterways. So we had to stay the night and due to the rough currents, we couldn't get back onto shore either. So we made the best of it. We had dinner at Las Boa and enjoyed drinks in the Atlas Lounge. The following day, we had to attend mandatory ship lectures regarding ship zodiacs and landing safety. Later that afternoon, we were required to participate in our parka, boots, and life vest fitting in the mudroom on the third floor. After a 24-hour delay, we were officially leaving Ushuaia for Antarctica. It is often warned that the infamous Drake Passage only has two moods, the Drake Shake or the Drake Lake, with the latter being quite rare, spanning more than 600 miles between Cape Horn and the South Shetland Islands. This unforgiving body of water is often extremely rough, able to turn even the strongest of stomachs. During my trip, swells reached seven to eight meters, equivalent to 20 to 30 height waves, making nearly everyone on board seasick and confined to their cabins. As such, crossing the Drake's Passage is a rite of passage for our Antarctica adventure. Luckily, after two days at sea, the first sights of land began to appear in the early evening hours. Our first stop on our itinerary is Deception Island. And it was New Year's Eve 2022, so I was extremely excited to be here. A short Zodiac cruise from the ship to the landing site brought me to finally step foot onto this white continent of Antarctica. Now you all might be questioning, where's all the white ice? This unique island is an active volcano with a flooded caldera in the center, forming a natural but extremely narrow harbor. A popular tourist spot is the Black Sand Beach where you can feel the volcano's warmth by digging your hand into the sand. Deception Island is one of several islands making up the South Shetland Islands. We spent two hours on shore before returning back onto the ship and enjoyed a cup of hot chocolate with a shot of Baileys to warm us up. After all that excitement, we got dressed up and enjoyed a New Year's Eve dinner with friends. After dinner, we went to the Dome Lounge for a night of dancing and ringing in the 2023 year in Antarctica. The next three days were spent exploring the western side of the Antarctic Peninsula with two to three excursions per day. On day four, we woke up in Foyne Harbor. Before our expedition, we quickly got some breakfast from the Las Boa restaurant, which offers a wholesome breakfast selection, including yogurt, smoothies, egg specials, cold cuts, and more. During my expedition, the World Traveler carried about 150 passengers. To adhere to the International Association of Antarctica Tour Operators regulation of only 100 people ashore at one time, one group would go onto land 
while the others will be on the waters via Zodiac. And then the groups would switch. Foreign Harbor makes for a great Zodiac excursion, with one of the most unusual attractions being a shipwreck of a Norwegian factory ship, known as the Governorin. Now it's time for the famous Polar Plunge. With 150 passengers on board, 90 of which chose to participate in the Polar Plunge, groups must line up at the Atlas Lounge. And of course, my group was selected to go first. I was a little worried that my heart might stop upon entering the cold waters. But encouraged by the fact that everyone else is doing this and that they all turned out fine, I braid myself up to do it too. I approach the water, noticing that I have an entire audience of passengers above me. I took a big breath and I leaped into the water, forgetting to pose for the camera person in the Zodiac nearby. The cold water took my breath away. Once back on the ship, we were handed a shot of tequila to warm up and to celebrate the life experiencing moment. Still on day four, our next stop is Couverville Island. To prevent introducing non-native species and diseases, we must clean our boots and clothing each time before entering Antarctica. The entire island of Couverville is covered in ice and snow and is the territory of the Gen 2 penguins. Here you will see the famous penguin highways, allowing them to travel between their nest and the water. During our time here, we were able to hike up the island to check out the multiple Gen 2 penguin colonies and get a spectacular view of the bay. On day five, our next stop is Port LaCroix, a former Antarctic base. This site is managed by the UK Antarctic Heritage Trust and is home to a colony of breeding Gentoo penguins. This place is also known for being the world's most southern post office, also referred to as the Penguin Post Office. Here you can buy a postcard, stamp it, and send it directly to your special someone. Next, we did some kayaking, which is a must do when in Antarctica. So we were presented with a perfect sunny and warm day. We took off kayaking in Borgen Bay, bumping through the ice and gliding across glassy bay waters, which was one of the best experiences of my trip in Antarctica. Day six was our last landing, and the ship expedition crew took us to visit Port Charcot. The hike uphill was challenging for many because of the uneven and slippery snow, but the views from the top was worth it. Check out this view. The other primary eatery to consider is Paula's Pantry. This here is a casual spot for grab and go. This includes sweets, healthy options, juices, and coffees. Our last Zodiac cruise took us to Winter Island, a historic Antarctic research space closed to visitors due to the pandemic. 
During this expedition, I witnessed a red pigmentation algae on the island's ice caps. This algae thrives in freezing water when the summer hits the polar regions. Winter Island was the last of our Antarctica expeditions and now it was time to return back to Ushuaia. The adventure back will take two full sea days. So what that meant was I need to enjoy the best of what the ship had to offer, including its outdoor walking track, music and self dance parties on the pool deck, dinners in the Los Boa restaurant, drinks and good conversations in the dome lounge, and free nightly shows. It's impossible to predict exactly how a visit to Antarctica will go because it's Earth's most rarest and wildest places. My nine day journey aboard Atlas Ocean Voyages to Antarctica invoked my sense of adventure for years to come. Everything about my voyage was much more than I hoped for. Once we arrived in Ushuaia, it was time to disembark the world traveler and carry on to our next adventure. Well folks, this is the end of my video and I hope you found it helpful as you plan for your next adventure in Antarctica. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And before you go, make sure to subscribe to Mike on the Move so I can keep you posted on my latest videos and adventures. I look forward to engaging with you all soon. Stay safe and stay healthy. See you later. Bye-bye.